good morning. Welcome to St. James Lutheran Church and happy Easter. It's not Easter Sunday, but it is still the season of Easter and our lessons today will remind us of blessings that are ours every day because of Easter. We'll follow the order of service as it's printed here uh, in the service folder as it appears on the screens behind me. We join together to sing the opening hymn. Hallelujah, Jesus lives. Savior. 
Jesus paid the penalty for our guilt by his death on the cross and freed us from death by his resurrection from the grave. We have peace with God now and forever. Amen. In peace let us pray to the Lord. disciples went about the work that Jesus would remind them was theirs to do. They met what Jesus also foresaw. Challenge and persecution and danger. And yet they continued. Empowered by the spirit they had received from Jesus himself. The apostles performed many signs and wonders among the people. 
And all the believers used to meet together in Solomon's colony. Then the high priest and all his associates, who were members of the party of the Sadducees, were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. Go stand in the temple courts, he said, and tell the people all about this new life. At daybreak, they entered the temple courts, as they had been told, and began to teach the people. When the high priest and his associates arrived, they called together the Sanhedrin, the full assembly of the elders of Israel, and sent to the jail for the apostles. But on arriving at the jail, the officers did not find them there. So they went back and reported, We have found the jail securely locked, with the guards standing at the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. On hearing this report, the captain of the temple guard and the chief priests were at a loss, wondering what this might lead to. Then someone came and said, came and said Look, the men you put in jail are standing in the temple courts teaching the people. At that, the captain went with his officers and brought the apostles. They did not use force because they feared that the people would stone them. The apostles were brought in and made to appear before the Sanhedrin to be questioned by the high priest. We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, he said. Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. <clears throat> Peter and the other apostles replied, We must obey God rather than human beings. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead, whom you killed by hanging him on a cross. God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and savior, that he might bring Israel to repentance and forgive their sins. We are witnesses of these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for the day is Psalm 150. We'll sing this psalm together in unison.
second lesson is recorded in the book of Revelation, chapter 1, beginning at verse 4. Here, too, we see that John is under persecution. In fact, he's exiled on the island of Patmos when he receives this vision from God to strengthen not only himself, but then also uh, the churches and the believers of his day, and us, too, with the message of God's peace in Jesus. John, to the seven churches in the province of Asia, grace and peace to you from him who is, and who was, and who is to come, and from the seven spirits before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, and has made us to be a kingdom and priest, to serve his God and Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all peoples on earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. I, John, your brother and companion in the suffering and kingdom and patient endurance that are ours in Jesus, was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. On the Lord's day I was in the Spirit, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet which said, Write on a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me, and when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And among the lampstands was someone like a son of man, dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet, and with a golden sash around his chest. The hair on his head was white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and coming out of his mouth was a sharp, double-edged sword. His face was like the sun, shining in all its brilliance. I saw him, but fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead, and now look. I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and Hades, the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. We have a new element uh, that we're introducing into our services here this Easter season. It's the gospel acclamation. Uh, I invite you to please stand. The choir will introduce the gospel acclamation to us today by uh, singing through it in this way. Those, that first line at the top is the organist's introduction. The choir will sing through the refrain and then the, the verse, the acclamation itself, and then we will join together with them as we're able in that second uh, refrain of Hallelujahs. also serve as our sermon text here this morning. 
On the evening of that, fir of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. And the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. He said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nail, nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written, that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated to sing our next hymn, In Christ Alone. <laughs>
Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father, and our Lord, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Words for our consideration here this morning are the words of the Gospel for today, reading just these words at this time. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. The words of our text. In the name of Jesus, dear fellow redeemed children of God. Last week was quite special, wasn't it? We gathered together for worship on Easter Sunday. In fact, a high watermark group of people since at least the beginning of the pandemic gathered together. The choir sang a beautiful anthem. Trombone played. We gathered together with a little time for fellowship beforehand with a special Easter breakfast and some of those wonderful scents and smells were still wafting into the church during worship time. It was a beautiful combination to our Holy Week, to considering everything that Jesus had done, his perfect life lived on our behalf, his innocent death suffered for us, his glorious resurrection. Today, not quite so much, huh? The crowd's a little sparser. There's no trombone. Dustin's gone back to school. The choir sang, but they sang to help us learn a, a new component to our worship rather than an anthem. Things are a little different. And yet, as I said at the start of worship today, it is still Easter. It may not be Easter Sunday, the day that we recognize and celebrate in a festival way. But it's still the Easter season. And even as we move throughout the, the rest of the, the year, Further and further away into Pentecost through summer, and, and uh, even as we move into Advent and the start of a new church. Lutherans have always recognized Sundays as little Easter's. Every single one of them, 52 of them every year, serve for us as opportunities to focus on everything that Jesus has done. His life, his death, his resurrection too, that is so foundational to us. Because Easter blesses your every day. That was a lesson that the disciples and others who had gathered together with needed to learn even on that first Easter evening. Here they were. And you think of the events of that day that have already happened, that have already reinforced this idea that Jesus has done everything he said he would do and he is now alive. The women went out to the tomb early that Easter morning. They saw the strips of linen lying there and they heard from the angel that he was risen. Jesus appeared to those women and to Mary and to Peter and to the Emmaus disciples. And all of that news has gotten back to the disciples and, and they're gathered together there in that house in Jerusalem shaking in their boots quivering in fear. The doors are locked. 
Because if they've heard and seen and understand all of this, then guess who else is coming around to this idea? The Roman soldiers who were standing outside the tomb had seen the stone rolled away. And the tomb is empty. And what are those Jewish leaders going to think? What are they going to do? They'll recognize us. There'll be trouble. They'll arrest us. They'll put us to death. Jesus understood that too. He understood that was the mindset of the disciples. That was their fear, their doubt, their concern. And so he comes to them. Doesn't knock on the door and ask to come in. He simply comes in miraculously and he stands among them. And you can imagine. He simply says to them, Peace be with you. A statement filled with incredible meaning for them. A statement meant to calm their doubts and fears. A statement by which Jesus was emphasizing to them. He's emphasizing it by the fact that this is the very first thing he said. Peace be with you. He's emphasizing it also. By the very fact that what those words meant. She spoke. It wasn't just all Settle down, like we might say. He was really saying, you disciples, everything is in its proper place. Everything is just as it needs to be. Think about that for just a moment, would you? Everything is in its proper place. Bringing calm to chaos. Bringing certainty to their doubt. Reassurance amidst their fear. Was this reminder that everything was in its proper place? That included the disciples gathered together in wonderment. It included Jesus too. Now standing beside them among them, reminding them of his constant, continual, abiding presence. Everything is in its proper place. There is nothing to be fearful of. How that must have struck them, huh? After 72 hours of utter chaos? Just walk yourself back from Thursday night, right? And what seemed like a nice night in the upper room, and yet heavy hearts, knowing what Jesus was saying to them without perfect comprehension. Confusion. 
grasp of their personal failures. They all deserted him. Every single one. And Peter disowned them, even after having prior warning. And was distraught about. Here's the thing. To you too today, Jesus says, peace be with you. Everything is in the proper place. There is nothing to be afraid of. When the uncertainties of life swirl about you, and don't they swirl about you every day? Jesus says, peace be with you. Everything is in its proper place. There is nothing to worry about. When the enemies of Christ's church lash out about, against you, and your faith, your faithfulness in getting up and coming together to listen once more to this familiar account. And to shout and to sing your praises to him. Peace be with you, Jesus says. Everything is in its proper place. When Satan tries to get you to re-examine everything, to apply human reason to all of these accounts and, and to wonder again if it's possible, if it's real, if it's true, Jesus says, peace be with you. Everything is in its proper place. For these disciples, Jesus did more than simply tell them that. He showed them. He showed them his hands. He showed them the side that was pierced after he had died. There could be no doubt. This wasn't some trick. It wasn't some ruse, whatever doubts their mind might be throwing against them. Whatever questions they might have in spite of all of the different testimonies they had already heard. How many different people had seen him? I, the one who laid out on the cross and gave his life for you. And then he reminded them. He reminded them of the work that they had been trained and were now ready to do. He begins first with, again, that statement, peace, peace be with you, everything is in its proper place. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. What a blessing it would be for them. To know that as they carried out the work that God had entrusted to them, that Jesus had prepared them for it, Everything was exactly where it needed to be. In its proper place. Even as they faced the challenges to that message that would surely come, that they had seen come to Jesus himself, that we saw in our lessons for today from Acts and from Revelation, the persecutions, the compulsion to stop telling others this good news, this message. They had Jesus' command. I am sending you. I'm sending you with a message. A message of peace. A 
message of Christ crucified and the message of the empty tomb that tells us that death is not the end. That life is bigger than simply whatever time we have here with two feet on the ground. That there is life after life. Jesus really died. His hands and his side were visual proof of that. And yet here he stood among them. And that was the heart of the message they were to proclaim. And here's the takeaway for us. We walk this annual journey, right? Year after year, we long to gather together. That's why we had such a high watermark last week. Right? We long to gather together on Easter Sunday and to, to relive the, the message and the power and the meaning of everything that happened that day. We love the pomp and the music and all of the things that go along with it. It's for us. It's for us too that everything is in its proper place. And it's for us too that we are to go out and to carry on this message to be 21st century disciples to whom Jesus has shown his hands and his feet and his side. And maybe we haven't seen them with our physical eyes, but we've seen them with the eyes of faith. We know what Jesus has done. His spirit has convicted us of it. And he tells us, I am sending you. I'm sending you with a message to the world. It's an amazing thing, isn't it? That we aren't to keep this good news to ourselves, but to share it. As you might have imagined, for the last eight months or so, ever since I actually received the call to St. James, not just accepted the call, but when you first, when Dale first called me up and said, Pastor, we've extended a call to you to come and be our pastor here in, in Portage, Michigan. I've been thinking about that. What does this look like at St. James in Portage? And I'll tell you, from several hundred miles away, it's hard to get a handle on. What, is it, what does it look like? But you, can, you can start to, to see it. And, and I hope that as we move forward in ministry, and uh, you got an email from me this week reminding you that we have an announcement to you, I suppose, in most cases, that we have a voters meeting today. The work that we do together as a congregation that we help to coordinate with, with different boards and, and, and a council and, and, our el and our voters gather together around is not just about what happens here on Sunday. It's about what we do together to get that message out to tell others, to invite them to come and join us, to learn of Jesus. It's how we live our lives, the things we do and say when we're away from this building that reveal to people that, yes, indeed, everything is in its proper place. We are at peace, and they can be too. It's difficult, it's challenging. So we strive to do that work, we'll no doubt face the same kinds of persecutions and challenges that the disciples did, people trying to just quiet us, stop us, put roadblocks in our way. But John, as he concludes this chapter, reminds us that we have it with all certainty, that this is the truth. When he writes, Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book, but these are written, that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. 
And friends, you do believe. And because you do, Easter blesses you every day with peace and with the privilege of that opportunity to proclaim that message, to share Jesus, our risen Lord Jesus, with our community and the world around you. Amen. I invite you to please stand. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds. In Christ Jesus. Amen. We join together to confess our Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God. Eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified and crucified. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. To continue with the responsive prayer of the church, we'll include in our prayers this morning special petitions on behalf of Peggy Hartman as she uh, is moved into uh, transitional uh, care for some rehab, at least over the next couple of weeks. We join together. <clears throat> Almighty and merciful God, on this glorious day we rejoice in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Increase our faith that the message of the empty tomb may fill our lives and make us glad each day. When we are weak, be our strength. When we are sad, be our song. And when we sin, be our salvation. Remove the hurt of death from all who mourn. In moments of grief, call believers through the voice of our Good Shepherd and embolden us to follow His promises. In their hopelessness of despair, turn the faithless to trust in the only way, truth and life. King of kings and Lord of lords, destroy all dominion, authority, and power that stands against you, whether seen or unseen, whether evil exerts itself against your saving will, false teaching or lukewarm faith, Satan's lies or worldly pleasures, empty worship or futile religion, rule it for the sake of the gospel's free course. Walk among our churches, O living one, as the faithful witness and firstborn from the dead. As your angels send women with the news of the risen Christ, call women in our church to announce he is risen. As you send your disciples with the breath of the Spirit, call those in our church full of the Spirit and wisdom to administer the keys of the kingdom. Heavenly 
Father, keep the baptized, united with your Son in his resurrection. Put to death the fleshly urges of those caught in addictions. Hold in your righteousness anyone ashamed of good intentions which have fallen short, and assure those searching for purpose that their eternal identity as your dear children is sealed. Thank you for the power of baptism working in our lives and for the certainty of its promises through the resurrection. Enrich us with everything we need for life and godliness. Heavenly Father, especially today we pray for Peggy Hartman. We thank you for uh, continuing to be with her and, and watching over her and extending her, her life here on earth. We ask as she has moved into transitional care that you would be with her now too and give her strength if it is your will. Uh, remind her of, of your abiding presence and your gracious promises and uh, give her comfort to know that, that you are with her in, in all things. Uh, if it is your will, allow her also then to return home, but above all, uh, continue to draw her closer to yourself. Uh, in these these difficult days of, of rehabilitation and, and, and loneliness. Hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence. O Lord of life, you have done mighty things for us. We pray through him who is the beginning and the end, Jesus Christ, our Lord. His name is above every name, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. I invite you to please stand. on the cross, took away the sins of the world, and by his glorious resurrection restored everlasting life. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Fulfill your promises, he stretched out his hands on the cross 
and released, our, released from eternal death all who believe in you. As we remember Jesus' death and resurrection, we thank you that you have gathered us together to receive your Son's body and blood. Send us your Spirit. Unite us as one and strengthen our faith so that we may praise you in your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we glorify and honor you, O God our Father, with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Where Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated for our closing hymn.
morning again and welcome. What a, what a blessing to be with you all again on the second Sunday of Easter. A couple of things to highlight for you this week. Uh, first of all, take a look at the back of your uh, service folder there. There's a lengthy announcement about summer vacation Bible school and the need for helpers, teachers, aides, music people, um, craft people, volunteers to, to watch the kids on, on the playground and outside for, for just free time and so on. So uh, we need a lot of help and uh, we'd like to get a handle on who might be available, willing, able to help us uh, for that uh, here by by tomorrow, if possible. I, they included that yesterday in our email. If, if you're a little bit uncertain, certainly let me know. Um, if it's about checking on a date or a time, you know, but shoot me an email, give me a call, send me a text message, whatever it might be, just somehow get in touch with me so we can uh, make some decision here whether we're moving forward with that or, or, or not for the coming year. Uh, it does take more than just a couple of people to pull it off. Um, and yet, uh, you know, we're, we're a little bit uh, short here on, on time at this point, too, to, to get rolling. So, um, third week of June, I think, June 20th, if I remember right. The dates are in that, in that announcement. Uh, I do want to thank everyone who came yesterday to help with uh, cleanup and beautifying and cleaning our, our property, grounds, buildings, and so on. Uh, I don't know, 20-ish people? That uh, was a great day, beautiful day, a little warm by the end of it, but uh, a lot of work was done. You'll notice uh, different things around campus that were taken care of, uh, both inside and out. The windows all have a new shine to them, and, and uh, a tree out there was was half taken down, and some branches trimmed up uh, around the, the rest of campus too. So um, a lot of work was done. Uh, there's, there's other things to do. The trustees will be working on some things if you have some time, and, want to ask them about them. Uh, I'm sure they'd be happy to hear from you too about that. I did mention in the sermon, uh, mention it again today, uh, we do have a voters meeting uh, today after uh, fellowship time. So uh, the Ladies Guild is providing fellowship today uh, and uh, that's out there. The snacks are out there on the table, ready to go. Certainly encourage you to stay and, and join us for that. And uh, stay and join us for the voters meeting as well to, hear about the work that we're, we're doing together and get a status update on some of the things that are, are going on. Uh, Ladies Guild meets one week from tomorrow. Uh, their regular monthly meeting that's at 10 o'clock. Um, and take a, take a look also while you're in there at Fellowship. Take a look at the uh, Fellowship host server sign-up sheet. Uh, today is the last day that we have anybody signed up. So for the month of May, um, if, if somebody doesn't sign up, we'll have nothing next week. So give that a look if you're able. Uh, we'd be happy to have you assist us in that way too. With that, have a blessed week as you know that uh, your every day is blessed with the, the gifts of, of the resurrection, the gifts of Easter. Have a great week.